I praise the Lord. This is an evening service, so we need to keep awake. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Help me just appreciate Pastor Mark for the honor and Pastor Kathy that have given us to be here today to minister God's word to God's people. We are God's people and there is a word for you today. Amen. Amen. This evening I've got a word and um, it simply is one-to-one. I'm a chaplain as well, a full-time chaplain, as well as pastor in the church in Kennington, and I do a lot of one-to-ones. I do support a lot of people in the railways, the London Underground, and the Southeastern trains. And um, one-to-one is part of my daily task. And um, we have also seen how Managers have one-to-ones with their staff members. How many of us have had one-to-ones before? All the time. We do have one-to-ones with our, with our managers. If you're a manager, you have a one-to-one with um, your staff. And also, there can also be one-to-one, a parent and a child. We do make time to have a one-to-one as a father to a daughter, yeah. as a mother to a son, vice versa. We do make one-to-ones. Amen. But I want to present to us today the greatest of all in terms of one-to-one. As a chaplain, we give pastoral support and care in our one-to-ones, but I'm telling you, I've got above me the chaplain of all chaplains. Hallelujah. And it is him I present to you this evening. The chaplain of all chaplains that the woman at the well met. She encountered the chaplain of all chaplains. The woman at the well, when she had this encounter, she did not even realize that she had met with the greatest one. The one who gives hope to the hopeless. The one who calms the heart that is broken. The one who brings healing. My text is from the the Gospel of John, chapter 4, from verses 1 to 29. But because of my time... I wouldn't bore you with reading it. I believe all of us know this text. But what am I here to help us with today? I'm here to help us to understand that it is time for one-to-one. Many of us have been calling on a human being. Many of us have been looking for help from different places. But I want to present you the one with whom you would have a one-to-one, and your life will never remain the same. This month, Pastor Mark had given us a theme for the month, which is encounter. Today, I pray we'd encounter Jesus Christ as the one that will bring you to that place where you ought to be. In the book of John chapter 4, when I began to look at the verses from verse 1, I saw how Jesus was wearied, and he had to pass through this place called Samaria. And this was not a place that a Jewish man whom he was would actually go by. But that day, Jesus passed through Samaria. I want to let somebody know today, Jesus is passing here in Katie. Katie family, Jesus is passing here tonight. If you were sitting down, begin to sit properly, because Jesus is here with us tonight. And I want to let you know it's not only this evening, but Jesus is here. Amen. You might have been coming to drink of this well, but I want you to know that this is the well that you drink from and you'll be satisfied. Amen. This is the right place to be at the right time. This is the set time, the set season that the Lord is moving and is doing mighty things. And I pray that none of us will be left behind. You know, there are times the Lord is doing mighty things and some people are aloof. Some people are bystanders, but I want you not to be a bystander. Be part of what he's doing, as he's doing a one-to-one with each and every one of us in this well. Come and drink. It is time for us to make sure that we drink of the living water, that we will not be thirst any longer. I don't know how you are here today. I don't know how you came. I don't know what has been bothering you. I don't know what is the condition. I don't know what is the situation that you have left. This woman came to that well on that day, the well that they cherished, that well that they valued. It is, the well is called Jacob's well. She came to that well. She didn't know that was her own moment. 
That was our own time. That is why for me, whenever I have the opportunity to come into the house of the Lord, I come expecting. Because today might be your day. I believe there is somebody here that this word would resonate in your heart. And today is that day wherein you receive this word. Some of us have heard of this account before, but today God is doing a mighty work in you and through you by reason of this encounter with the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. When this woman came, she came to draw water. This was a famous well where she was. And um, Jesus Christ was there, wearied, sitting down. And my Bible made me to understand that by that time, his disciples had gone to find food. So it means they were not there. I had come to realize that there were times when Jesus Christ wanted to minister, the disciples stopped the people. How did you know, Pastor? When they, they brought the children for Jesus to pray on them and bless them, did the disciples not stop them? And Jesus said, suffer not the children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. The disciples did not understand, so they wanted to stop the children. So sometimes there could be those that want to stop you. There could be those that even when you want to press in, they want to distract you. So at that particular time, when Jesus was at that well, that Jacob's well, nobody could stop him because the disciples were not there. They had gone. If you read the accounts, you would see that. They had gone to buy bread. So it was the right moment. It was the right time. It was the time for that woman to be blessed. It was the time for that woman's life to have a 360 degrees turnaround. I pray today somebody would have a 360 degrees turnaround because Jesus is meeting you right here. Amen. Are we together, church? Yeah. What am I saying? When Jesus came and spoke to the woman, can I have water to drink? Just two of them, one on one. The woman said, how can a Jewish man ask me, a Samaritan woman, for drink? This is impossible. The Samaritans were considered as outcasts by the Jews. The Samaritans were considered as half-breeds by the Jews. They were looked at that they were inferior. There are those of us that are here, if you are feeling inferior, I want to let you know Jesus has not made you inferior. Hallelujah. And because of that, Jesus was speaking to one who had seen herself as inferior and cannot engage with a Jewish man. That is why she was saying, how can you, how dare you, a Jewish man, to ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jesus is for everyone. Every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. That is why we love our Kitty family. Jesus is here for us. Amen. Amen. And this woman, Jesus began to have a dialogue with her. If you know who is asking you for water to drink, you would even be saying, just give me the water. In fact, I will not give you water. You are the one that should be giving me water because you will need what I have. What I am to give to you is precious. What I am to give to you is valuable. What I have to give to you would make you never to be thirsty again. Yeah. The woman was thinking, which manner, what manner of man is this? Ah, in the first place, I am a Jewish, I'm a Samaritan woman. You are a Jewish man and you are having to dialogue with me, telling me, in fact, about this world that our forefathers had built. But Jesus is all-knowing, and he wants to meet you as he met this Samaritan woman. And as they, they continued in the dialogue, Jesus revealed himself to her. If we look at John chapter 4, let me go there quickly. John chapter 4, verse 25. John 4, 25 tells us, the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. So the woman knew that there is a Messiah that is to come. But it did not know, she did not know she was engaging with the Messiah. Let that not be our portion. May we not have Jesus in the house and then we are looking for him somewhere else. Katie family, let us know Jesus is in the house. 
and he, has, he wants to have a one-to-one -one with us, not only here and now, but whenever we meet, and open our hearts to receive him whenever we are here, whenever we are in his presence. He wants to have a one-to-one -one with us. And Jesus then said to the woman, in verse 26, I that speak unto thee, I am he. The one that is talking to you is the one that is the Messiah. This one-to-one -one that I'm having with you, it is for your change. It is for you to become, I love you so much. I want the best for you, oh thou woman. This is basically what Jesus is saying. And I pray that you would recognize not only the presence of the Lord Jesus, but you recognize him as he is with us at all times. That will not just be coming and going. We have this thing in church wherein sometimes we are just coming and going. And there is no encounter. I pray for us that there will be fresh encounters daily in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree fresh encounters in this household. I decree fresh encounters for you in the name of Jesus. That you have such an encounter that your relationship will grow deeper and stronger. In Christ. And nothing will shake you. Nothing will move you. I decree you're unmovable. I declare you're unstoppable in the mighty name of Jesus. So that was how Jesus revealed himself to this woman. Jesus is revealing himself to us again and again. I want to speak to somebody this evening that you might have been in the position wherein your heart is broken. This woman, Jesus had to tell her in the dialogue, you have been living with Five husbands, husband one, husband two, husband three, husband four, husband five. And the one that you are even living with now is not your husband. So even the sixth one is not yet married to you, but you are living with another man. That was a situation. If somebody had had five husbands, that tells me this person is definitely broken. What happened to husband one? Husband one would have broken her heart. What happened to husband two? Do you know whenever we separate from somebody we had loved, it's, it leaves a, 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 a scar in our hearts. It wounds our soul. I believe by this time this woman's soul was wounded. After five husbands, five relationships, there are some of us that have been in relationships, maybe not in a marital relationship, but relationships that have caused wounds in our hearts. Relationships that have caused disappointments. Relationships that have caused hurts, pains. Relationships that have left us broken. Encounter Jesus and be mended. When you encounter Jesus, one of the benefits you will get is healing in your soul. Tonight, the Lord Jesus is bringing healing to somebody's soul. Receive him. He's bringing healing. I don't know who is here that is saying... Pastor, you are truly talking to me. The way I trusted people and the way they have betrayed me, my heart is broken. My heart is broken. I'm feeling so from within. It is only my pillow that knows because at night when I sleep, I'm just sighing because I'm wondering, where did I go wrong? I did all I could, but see how it had turned out. But I'm here to present you the one that is having a one-to-one -one with you here and now. And he's saying, I have I've come to heal that wound in your soul. I've come to heal that wound in your spirit. Anyone whose spirit man has been damaged, the Lord is healing now. Amen. Receive the healing power of God. When that woman encountered Jesus, another benefit that she received, she received life. Said, if I give you the water that springs to eternal life. There are things that have been dead in her life. Dead relationships. Yeah. Dead marriages. Yeah. Nothing to look for. But I, I, I sense from the word that the Lord brought life. Everlasting life. Life that is not stopping here on earth. She encountered the one who made her to have life and life eternal. Amen. Eternal bliss was ours. And this is what Jesus is bringing to us, life to every dead situation. Any situation that has been dead in your life, the dry bones in your life, may they receive life now. 
bones coming back to bones, flesh coming back to flesh. Now, the breath of God is entering into that situation and life is restored. Life is restored. Somebody receive life in the mighty name of Jesus. In this one-to-one, -one, you cannot go back the same. We are not leaving the house of the Lord the same way we came. As you receive life, you will give life through this week. As you go through the journey of this week, you are going to give life. There is somebody there that is hurting that you speak life to. That is why we are witnesses of Christ. You receive so that you will give. I receive so that I give. That is why we have come. Amen? The woman, what I also saw with this woman and what Jesus did here is that Jesus brought her satisfaction. That's the satisfaction, this contentment that she had that she was carrying, she was walking, she was going about, doing her business, but I'm telling you, she carried so much dissatisfaction. She was depressed. In this day of our Lord, when I go about for what I do, I meet a lot of people that are depressed until you engage with people. This is why the one-to-one -one with Christ is important. Until you engage with people, you know, when we have done the makeup and all that with the nice ear style and everything put on the suit, we are looking prim and proper. Everyone thinks everything is going on right, but no. Just have some one-to-ones. Then you realize that many are really depressed. But Jesus is sorting out depression. That is why we need the one-to-ones. We have been running Elter Skelter to find counselors, chaplains like myself, Elter Skelter, but I'm presenting you the one that will bring satisfaction to your soul. You'll be satisfied. It would always make you have that warm embrace that whatever has been depressing, it leaves. It leaves. Under this atmosphere, I know depression is going. Anyone that has been struggling with depression, that depression is going. I decree the freedom that is in Christ Jesus. This is the one-to-one -one we are talking about. There is freedom in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is here and he's touching your hearts. He's touching your hearts. You are not going back depressed. Some of us that have been taking depressant pills, you will go back and you will have no, to take it no more. Amen. I say you will take it no more. I have come with a prophetic voice to declare, you will take that depression pills no more. Why? Because Jesus is the one that is bringing satisfaction. Be satisfied in Christ. You are encountering him today. You are encountering him not even today, afresh. It's a fresh encounter. We need it. I always cry out to the Lord, Father, fresh encounters. Because, you know, as we journey on, we can be bad to we sometimes. Situations of life can have, could have left you in a place wherein you don't even know what is going on. I've come to let you know, the Lord Jesus is releasing satisfaction. And finally, the fourth point I want to make is that this woman also... Encountering Jesus made her to be transformed. Transformation and direction. The Lord is bringing direction. As transformation is taking place now, direction is coming. He's directing us as to where we should go. The next level, the next phase, what we should do, directing us for this journey of this year, directing us for the journey of your life, the journey of whatever you are called into. We need supernatural direction. This woman was directed on that day. Imagine, I believe, her life was going around in circles from one failed relationship to the other. But from that day forward, she had direction. She was able now to become the first evangelist, female evangelist, to go and call the same men and tell them, come and see the man. Come and meet with The one that I have met with, come and meet with him. Come and have the same one-to-one. -one. As the Lord is speaking to us this evening, Katie family, what is he saying? He's releasing us now under this one-to-one -one that he's doing with you, releasing you so that you are transformed, you are, are directed that you will go back as we go this week and tell them 
in that workplace. Tell them in that neighborhood. Tell them in the highways and in the byways. Tell them that the Lord will give you opportunities to meet, that come and meet the man. I have met him, and he means the world to me. Come and meet him. You know, we go about and people share their own difficulties. They share their own challenges with us. And sometimes we, go, we leave them and we're thinking, how can I help them? It is time. Like this woman, she had direction. This is the direction the Lord is taking us. Let us go and tell them that Jesus, Jesus is the only one that can answer to them. For this one-to-one that we are having, this one-to-one that we will keep having, as long as we're in Christ, we need the one-to-ones. There are times we just have to just sit in his presence and allow him to do business with us. Allow him. Allow him. Enough of the hustle and bustle. There are too many hustling and bustlings. It is time to just sit, chill. Take a chill pill with Christ. And have that dialogue, those difficult conversations, like he asked, uh, like he had with this woman in Samaria. We need those difficult conversations. He needs to ask us the difficult questions. It was when Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband. Then she realized, I'm speaking to a prophet. This is not just um, a Jewish man, this is over and above a Jewish man. This is a prophet. And then she began to then relax herself. And the dialogue continued until she discovered herself. The Lord will cause you to discover yourself. As the woman was lost, but then she was found. I pray that the Lord will find many of us. Amen. We will not be lost in, the, in, the, in, the, in this world. We will not be lost with everything that is happening. Because sometimes we are Christians, but yet we are lost. Too many things going on at the same time. Too many. Jesus is calling us again. Have that one-to-one with me. Have that one-to-one with me. Yes. Hope family, this is what... Sorry. Katie family, I wanted to say hope, you see. Katie family, this is what I present to you today. Have the one to one with Jesus Christ. He's already at the well waiting for you. Let us come and drink. One thing we must know, he never condemns. This is where I'm ending. Jesus does not have one to one to condemn you. John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's look at that quickly. John, the gospel of John chapter 3. For God so loved the world, I'm reading from verse 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Do you see that? But that the world through him might be saved. Men may condemn you. But with Jesus, there is no condemnation. He has come to save. He has come to deliver.